Hi guys and welcome back to TK Talk YouTube channel. This is the fourth step tour on Raspberry Pi. Today I will briefly explain all the apps in Raspberry Pi. Before we begin, we would really appreciate it if you guys gave us a like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell so you can get notified whenever we upload other videos. Let's start with Python and, and go down the order. BlueJ BlueJ is an integrated development environment for the Java program language, developed mainly for education purposes, but also suitable for small-scale software development. Gini Gini is a lightweight GUI text editor using Scintilla and GTK, including basic IDE features. It is designed to have short load times with limited dependency on separate packages or external libraries on Linux. Greenfoot Greenfoot is an integrated development environment using Java or Stride designed primarily for educational purposes at the high school and undergraduate level. It allows easy development for two-dimensional graphic applications such as simulations and interactive games. Mathematica is a modern technical computing system spanning most areas of technical computing, including neural networks, machine learning, image processing, ge geometry, data science, visualizations, and others. The system is used in many technical, scientific, engineering, mathematical, and, com and computing fields. MU MU is a Python editor for beginning programmers, designed to make the learning experience much more easier. Node-RED is a flow-based development tool for visual programming developed originally by IBM for wiring together hardware devices. APIs and online services as part of the Internet of Things. Node-RED provides a web browser based flow editor, which can be used to create JavaScript functions. Scratch Scratch is a block based visual programming language and website targeted primarily at children. So users of the site can create online projects using a block like interface. Scratch 2.0, also known as Scratch 2, was the second major version of Scratch, following Scratch 1.4. It, it, it featured a redesigned editor and website, and it was the first version that included the online editor as well as the offline one. Scratch 3 S Scratch 3.0 is the third and the current major version of Scratch. Sense Hat Emulator it is intended for people who own a Raspberry Pi and not a Sense hat. The Sense hat tans pieces of Raspberry Pi hardware. Sonic Pi Sonic Pi is a live coding environment based on Ruby, originally designed to support both computing and music lessons in school. Thony Python IDE Thony is an integrated development environment for Python that is designed for beginners. It supports different ways of stepping through the code, step-by-step -step expression evaluation, detailed visualization of the call stack, and a mode for explaining the concepts of, of references and heap. And lastly, Wolfram. Wolfram is a technical program environment used to write and code Wolfram Mathematica. Next, let's go to education. SmartSim is a free and open source digital logic circuit design and simulation package. SmartSim lets you create complex circuits by allowing you to create your own custom components and including them in other circuits, as if they were in any other built-in components. Library Office Base Library Office Base free and open source relational database management system that is part of the Libri Box Libri Office Office Suit Libri Office Calculator Libri Office Calculator is a spreadsheet component of the Libri Office software package Libri Office Draw Libri Office Draw is a free open source vector graphics editor 
LibreOffice Draw can be used to create complicated figures using the shape tools, straight and curved tools, polygon tools, and among other features. LibreOffice Impress LibreOffice imp includes several applications that make it versatile and free and open source office suit on the market. Writer, word processing, calc, spreadsheets, impress, presentations, draw, vector graphics and flowcharts, base, databets, base, databases, and math, formula editing. The LibreOffice Math LibreOffice Math is a formula editor that you can use to create or edit formulas, equations, in a symbolic form. You can use math within LibreOffice documents or as a standalone application. LibreOffice Writer LibreOffice Writer is a free and open source word processor and desktop publishing component of the LibreOffice software package. Next we have Internet Chromium Web Browser Chromium is a free and open source software project from Google. A source code can be complied into a web browser. Clause Mail Clause Mail is a free and open source C slash GTK plus or minus based email silent, which is both lightweight and highly configurable. Clause Mail runs on both Windows and Unix like systems such as Linux, BSD, and Solaris. It stores mail in the MH mailbox format. In com VNC Viewer. In computing, virtual network computing is a graphical desktop sharing system that uses remote frame buffer protocol to remotely control another computer. It transmits the keyboard and mouse events from the one computer to another relaying the graphical screen updates back in the other direction over a network. Sounds and Videos VLC Media Player VLC Media Player is a free, open source, portable, cross-platform media player software in and streaming media de server developed by the VideoLAN project. Graphic Image Viewer or Image Browser is a computer program that can display stored graphical images. It can often handle various graphics file format, such as software usually renders in the image according to properties of the display, such as color depth, display resolution, or and color profile. Boeing Boeing is a Raspberry Pi version of the old Atari game Pong. Bunner. Bunner is the Raspberry Pi version of Crossy Road. Cavern. Cavern is a somewhat Mario game. Minecraft Pi. Minecraft Pi is like Minecraft, except you can code and stuff such as houses, blocks, and teleport to whatever you want. Myrapod. Myrapod is a game where you destroy creatures that attack you and destroy boulders python games when you open python games you get a list of other games that were created using python soccer soccer is the raspberry pi version of fifa archiver A file arch archiver is a computer program that combines a number of files together into one archive file or a series of archive files for easier transportation or storage. File archivers may employ lossless data compressions in their archive files or to reduce the size of the archive. Calculator This computer can do hard math problems for you. File manager. A file manager. A file manager or file browser is a computer program that provides a user interface to manage files and folders. PDF viewers. P a PDF viewer is a, a computer that views your PDF files. 
Raspberry Pi Diagnostics. Raspberry Pi Diagnostics tested the Raspberry Pi speed. SD Card Copier SD Card Copier copies your Raspberry Pi card. Task Manager Task Manager is a Task Manager, System Monitor, and Startup Manager. If you have Windows, Terminal is the Raspberry Pi version of Command Prompt. Text Editor Text Editor is a simple editor that opens in a window like a normal application. It allows use of the mouse and keyboard and has tabs and Synax highlighting. Bookshelf Book, The bookshelf can download and read Raspberry Pi Press publications. The Bean Reference This app is a guide. Get started help and projects all help you get to know Raspberry Pi better. In, pre in preferences, you can change your settings. Now we will be showing you how to download apps for in Raspberry Pi. To download apps on Raspberry Pi, you can use two methods. You can download it from the preferences, add or remove for software, or you can use the bash command line with terminal. Today, however, we will only show you the first method and we will show you the next method in the next video. To download, you will have to go to add to preferences, add and remove software. We will go to games and click on this box next to play chess across three boards. Then click apply. Now go to games and as you can see 3D chess the app that we used has been downloaded. With that we have concluded our video. We Today we just did a brief tour on Raspberry Pi apps. In the next video we will talk about the second method on how to download apps using the bash command line. Thank you and see you in the next episode.